welcome back to Briggs on Books, our international talk show where we talk to authors from all over the world about their book, about their process. Uh, our next guest is actually a very fascinating guy. Uh, he found out at some point in his life that he was not going to be the uh, sorcerer to the queen or a knight errant, and so he had to go find other jobs. And, uh, well, let's just welcome him. A.D. Lander. Welcome, Adam. A.D. Lander, fantasy writer, the Ashale series. Did I say that right? You did indeed, yeah. Good afternoon, Mike, and good afternoon to everybody who's watching and listening. Hello. Now, I want to get to... Um, your careers and things you went through in your life. But first, let's talk about your books. I think the uh, first one was Angel Falling. That's correct. That came out two years ago, and Angel Rising was last year. Okay, and Angel Rising. Tell us about these books. What happens in the books? Don't give it all away, of course, but uh, the covers... I'll try not to. The covers themselves <laughs> make me want to read these. Tell us about the, the series. So, yeah, the, 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 the high concept pitch, I suppose, the elevated pitch is that there are... Uh, dark fantasy noir thrillers set in a, a, a sort of fantastical world of Machiavellian angels and Bushido vampires. That was kind of the original sort of elevator pitch. So the main character is, and the narrator of the book is written in first person is Ashael. He's an angel, uh, but he's a bit of an outcast among his own people. Uh, a bit of background, he's a member of a judgment flight called the Seventh Flight. Um, and this uh, group basically travel from worlds. They, they follow the uh, direction of a celestial power that they call Excelsis. Um, and Excelsis has directed them to judge worlds that have fallen under the sway of evil or bad gods and bad practice. So they basically go and judge on behalf of Excelsis. And it always goes fine until they uh, suddenly encounter this race called the Suke. Uh, and the Suke are sort of energy vampires, stroke demons, um, who've been through a renaissance and enlightenment. So they, in a previous age, they were sort of rapacious world slavers and killers and worshipped a very dark pantheon of bloodthirsty gods. But they've been through this renaissance and enlightenment. So when the angels arrive, their entire society is not what they're expecting it to be. Uh, and they fight a judgment war, which basically ends up in a stalemate. Neither side can seem to win. So a peace follows, and Ashiel becomes, uh, goes from being a soldier to being a diplomat, falls in love with the enemy. Um, sadly, his lover is murdered, um, and he doesn't really understand why, so he puts him in a bit of a downward spiral, as he suspects both angels on one side and vampires on the other may have all had reasons to want to kill uh, his lover. Uh, so when we first meet him, he's in a bit of a downward spiral. He's addicted to a drug called Rain, which is a vampire drug. Um, and, you know, things are not going well. And then he's suddenly called back into service uh, as an elite concubine, a vampire concubine, is slain on angelic ground. And it's exactly the same manner in which his dead lover was killed. So he's very motivated then to try and find out what happens. And he starts to encounter uh, a sort of a cabal, a conspiracy that could ignite the war again. Um, so uh, he's partnered with a, a, a vampire elite spirit warrior. His name is Lita, uh, and the two of them start to race against time to stop an atrocity which would start the war against us. So that's, that's your kind of executive summary. Yes. It's uh, am amazing, people who write fantasy. I just don't know how your mind creates the realm, the people, the characters, and it's amazing. That's why I like to read fantasy. <laughs> Who's going to read this book? Mostly uh, fantasy lovers? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's definitely aimed. At, it's an adult marketplace, so it's aimed at adults who are into fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you like Neil Gaiman or any of the grim dark authors like Joe Abercrombie, that's the sort of a market I was aiming at, and would get a would enjoy this kind of thing. So yeah. Now tell me, like I said, you started off be hoping to train to be a sorcerer for the queen or a knight <laughs> errant, and those jobs just weren't open to you. So sadly, you went sadly. through some other careers. What were some of your careers? So actually, I started as a zookeeper. Bizarrely, uh, I worked at London Zoo uh, for uh, about well, about a year, I suppose, um, until I realised it wasn't the coolest place to be. Um, so, uh, yeah, I moved on and I had about 37 other jobs. So I worked in radio and that's where I've ended up actually eventually. Um, so I worked in radio, I worked in uh, video post-production, uh, I was an estate agent, uh, or a realtor as you call it, and, uh, 
yeah, all sorts of different things. And it, you know, it, I also worked in a fantasy bookshop for a, for a couple of years, um, which you know, heftily informed my reading uh, as time went on. Um, so, but yeah, and, and you know, this is this is the the dream, the dream gig going into my sort of later age, my third age, so to speak. Third age. Um, so you know, I'm just trying to build a foundation and, uh, and move on from there. Yeah. Now, your book, the first book, when did it first come to your mind? Was it over a matter of years, or did it all come at once? So I wrote actually Angel of Boarding back in about 2012, 13, thereabouts. Uh, it took about a year and a half to write. Um, a lot of that was kind of world building and sort of character building yeah. and basically informing the plot. Um, as, a, as I say, these are kind of like they're kind of like mystery novels, but with a fantastic wrapping, and that obviously it takes quite a bit of plotting um, and then yeah I think it all starts with character but then it sort of builds from there so um, yeah so yeah it's probably about a year and a half to write all in all um, but it, the original idea was just like a it came sort of like in the middle of the night as these things do when your brain is switched off from thinking about other things I guess. Yeah. Now let me ask you a little bit about your process because it seems like there's an awful lot to keep track of continuity wise where they yeah. are who they are their backstories uh, how do you track all that so uh, I have sort of like character cards that basically tell me everything that a character does um, and I also have a spreadsheet where I, I list out every chapter what happens in each chapter so that I can refer back to it because I'm now I'm just finishing book three or book three in the series is written it's just in the process of being uh, proofed at the moment Mm -hmm. um, and you know, obviously, I need to refer back to everything I've done before, and right. it's kind of so. Yeah, as you build, it's like layers of an onion. You peel it off, and more of it kind of reveals yeah. itself. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 part of the joy, really. I suppose of fantasy writing is you're not dealing with the real world. You can create your own rules. You can do whatever yeah, you course. like. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, hopefully, readers really enjoy that. Yeah. Now, on the uh, I was when you're telling us about the backstory or the story. Uh, I was putting up some of the artwork that seemed to kind of match with what you were talking about. Where is this yeah. artwork from? It did you create this? No, actually, I, I love fantasy art. I'm uh -huh. a big fan of all sorts of fantasy art by, by you know people from Frazetta onwards. Um, and uh, so I've commissioned here and there when I've had a bit of spare cash um, some artists that I quite like the look of to sort of do my characters, do some of the characters in the novels. So. Um, You'll see Ashael is there. He kind of looks a bit like Sting crossed with Daniel Frey. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, you know, then there's Plandriel, who's the angel with the red spear, uh, who's one of his sidekicks, um, and Sariel, who's the, sort of the scribe. And then there's probably a picture of Lita, I think, who is the vampire. There are two vampires, I think, in there. One is, one is Lita, who's the female, there's and Vodkash, who is the uh, leader of the suke, who is another one, who's the dark-skinned dark gentleman, so to speak. Yeah. Well, I, uh, the, the art is amazing. So uh, is that included in the book or is that just an extra? Uh, it's on my website and on my socials, but um, no, it's not in the book itself. So the front cover was uh, obviously done by uh, the two front covers for both Rising and Morning were done by the same artist. That's Katie Ritchie of uh, uh -huh. a company called Story Rappers, who does amazing art. She's yeah, it's, be it's ab absolutely beautiful. The cover itself makes you want to read the book. So um, now... Uh, I put your web address on the screen, 7th-flight.com. Uh, yep. What else would our viewers find on the website? Um, there is some musings. <laughs> nice. uh, and, uh, yeah, so basically it's kind of a, so it's definitely some, it's a, what they call a sale window for the series. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's some uh, thoughts from me, uh, there's some character backgrounds um and other stuff and I, I really need to do a bit more on my site than i have done to be honest with you you know where is the time this is the problem unfortunately i have a full-time job as well so you know, yeah. it's uh, never easy um on your time at the zoo you handled the bears and the uh seals that's right seals and sea lions yeah sea lions. was yeah. there any ever cross contamination between the two <laughs> only in the hospital so we had this um there's a zoo hospital and we had uh one of my favourite moments of my time there was we had a, a baby seal that was had been rejected by its mother and wouldn't feed. Um, so they have like isolated cubicles that you, which are basically little swimming pools that they put the seals in and they flop out and you feed them. But uh, the way they do it is they have sort of this mix of fish and whatever they put into like a cake mix uh, kind of thing, and you sort of open the jaws and 
squeeze it in. Yeah. The only problem is London Zoo at that time had two pairs of gloves. <laughs> one that was too thin, so you could feel the, the teeth basically coming yeah. through because uh, they have amazing jaw pressure, even as, you know, even as wow. children, as well as infants. Um, and ones that were too thick where you couldn't kind of get your, your hands into, into the jaws to where basically get them. So, but anyway, the, the way to do it is you basically throw a towel over it and they just basically stop because they're in darkness. Yeah. And that gives you a chance to sort of wrestle with them <laughs> and get their jaws open so they, they, they feed. By the way, it's a little after one in the afternoon here in California. What time is it there in London? Uh, it's just about quarter past nine at night. At night uh, and it's still light because uh, we're in the middle of summer, obviously. Okay. Um, but it's been a bit of a rotten day. It's been a bit cold and not so great today. English summer. English summer, okay. Uh, <laughs> A.D. Landor is our guest. We're about out of time, but I just want to give you a minute. Anything else you want to tell our viewers about you, your books, or the world in general? So I suppose the first, the first thing I'd like to say is, is to promote the next one, which is called Angel of the Final Hours. Okay. Uh, as I say, we're just in the last stages of, of proofing them out. That's going to come out in October. Uh, then I'm working on another series, which is a different fantasy series uh, called The Glimmer Charts, which mm. the first book of that is called The Children of Water, but we'll come back and talk about that some other time. Um, and uh, then I've got a trilogy of based in this world so these three books are the sort of opening sort of sequence. Then there's going to be a trilogy, which is much more connected, which will basically fall together. Nice. Uh, that will take me through to about 2030, I think, which will probably <laughs> goodness, lie yeah. down at that point in wow. time. That is, it just sounds like an awful lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of words to be mine, Mike, for that yeah. one. But uh, <laughs> is this your best job then, out of your 34 jobs? Yeah, I mean, it's the job I've always wanted to do, yeah. um, I guess. You know, it's just... It, it's it's as Edison said, you know, it's x x percent, you know, inspiration, and the rest is perspiration, yeah. and uh, that's about. It's just getting the words down as quick as you can. By the way, uh, where will we find these books for sale? Oh, sorry, yeah, they're they're actual local Amazon sites. So Kindle Unlimited, it's free. Uh, otherwise, there's paperback and hardback versions, or you can just if you're not a Kindle United, uh, Kindle sorry, unlimited subscriber. Um, you can pay a small fee. Uh, so, yeah, that's where you get them. Excellent. Well, A.D. Landers, our guest, all the way from uh, London, England, or somewhere around London there. And yeah. I re really appreciate your time, A.D. And I want to have you back more. You've got a brilliant mind. I want to uh, just like to hear you oh, think. That's, that's very kind. Thank like you. You, you too. Think, <laughs> and I like to hear you talk. Uh, for our viewers, stick around. We have another author coming up right after this. But in the meantime, go to your favorite book site by Angel Falling and... Uh, uh, Angel Rising. Uh, don't buy one. Buy five copies, for goodness sakes, and give them away to your friends. <laughs> uh, thanks, A.D. I, I love when you say that, Mike. Yeah. I mean, that's excellent. <laughs> it's hard enough to sell one copy, so please, that's if right. you are there. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with more Briggs on Books right after this. Thanks a lot.